What's up everyone, I'm Matt. I'm working on a really cool private label project, so come on into the design office and check it out. So we're working on a supercharger lid today for the GM LT4 engines. Um, there's a handful of these on the market. Dedicated reached out to us and they want something that's pretty unique, so I'll show you what we've got. Uh, this is the supercharger body and in purple you can see the OEM lid. Uh, and this is what we're replacing it with. We really wanted to create sort of one continuous flowing shape on the inside of the lid. So it definitely has a kind of unique sculpted design and the internal surfaces really closely match all of the features of the blower body. And there's this port divider here down the center to kind of kindly and gently guide the airflow around into the intercooler bricks. So the internal shape of the main body was actually kind of used to drive the entire shape of the exterior of the lid. So some of these contoured features around the outside translated into the, into the shape throughout the entire product. All right, now we're gonna send this part over to Eric so that he can program the part and make the fixtures. All right, so this is the end of op one on the lid. Uh, proved it out, found a few mistakes. This being one of them, ah, right there. This is really heavy still. Um, so we're obviously gonna fix that. I already have in the program. Um, but otherwise, this program actually proved out to be pretty well, pretty solid. Pretty happy with the results. So now we're cutting op two vacuum fixture, which will be basically the positive side of this. So we can slam this down on there and cut out the top side of the, the lid. This guy is the second fixture of this program. So we've already cut out op one of this fixture. As you can see, it's nicely finished here, raw bar stock on top. So we're gonna suck this down. We're gonna cut out the top side of this vacuum fixture. And then we're finally gonna cut op two of the lid. So we're gonna suck it down. Hit cycle start, hope for the best, go from there. So as far as like the programming time on something like this complex, so we've designed two vacuum fixtures, we've programmed, this is actually six programs in total, op one and op two of the actual part itself, the fixture of fixture one and fixture two. So we have six programs, three design products. We're talking probably somewhere around 30 hours of programming of my time, and then to actually prove out we did op one on Friday. That was a five hour setup basically to prove out op one, prove out op two on the fixture, and then prove out op one on the actual part. So you're talking about five hours there. Um, today I'm expecting to spend all day basically doing op one and op two on the fixture and then op two part. And that's basically because even though it simulates fine on the computer and everything's good, we still have issues. Like things still pop up. The machine doesn't do exactly what the program says it's gonna do. And when you start actually cutting it, you get chatter and things move around and stuff happens. That doesn't happen on the computer. It happens in real life. It doesn't happen on the computer. And yes, we've gotten better over time, but we're still learning. We're still improving. And every part has a new issue associated with it. Stuff that most people don't even know about, but that's part of the proving out process. Figuring it out, making sure it doesn't chatter, making sure it cuts right, making sure the tools don't plunge into material. Et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and that's what kind of takes a little bit more time up front. And then it's cycle start and you, you get a good part every time. All right, so on this screen, you see op two fixture. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of it's pro it, a project in its own. So I had to design this based off of the part that Matt designed earlier and then make it so that it's actually manufacturable because we have to make it, right? So make it manufacturable, make it able to be cut and then make it kind of simple enough but also located enough that the part in op two comes out properly. So um, that's what that's what I come up came up with. Uh, I hope it works. I think it'll work, but it's kind of like an unknown to be honest. I, I don't know this is going to work until we actually cut it, put it on the machine, and then put op one on it and make sure that it actually works and locates and actually sucks it down and all that stuff. So it's kind of like a it's an educated guess, but a decently educated guess. But um, we'll find out here in probably about an hour after 
uh, OP2 on the vacuum fixtures cut. So there's been specific cases where we've designed products for ourselves and others that we actually have to go back to the drawing board and actually revise because we can't make the vacuum fixture or we can't make the fixture at all. Um, so that's something that we always keep in mind and we try and avoid, but it's happened in the past where we can't actually machine the parts that we design or we can't actually make the fixture work the way we want it to work. So we go back to the drawing, make it again, um, obviously stuff that we try to avoid and we've gotten better over time, but that's just years and years of experience and time doing this. All right, so I've basically done OP2 on the vacuum fixture for OP2 on the part. Um, I have to pull it off and finish drilling these holes all the way through so that vacuum will go from the plate to actually this fixture. I can't drill it completely through on the machine because as soon as I would do so, there's nothing on top to actually ensure the vacuum stays there. So I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I drilled halfway through. All right, time to give it a shot, see what happens. All right, so we just finished with the roughing tool path on OP2, it's done with a half inch rougher. Uh, we've removed a lot of material. I don't know how much, but we removed a lot. It took about half an hour to get to this point. Um, now we're gonna start finishing the walls, finishing the, the ceilings, whatever you wanna call it, floors. I don't know, floor ceiling. Um, and we're gonna do some ball marks. And we took a really aesthetic approach to this part, trying to make it different and really cool. Um, it's designed differently and it's gonna be programmed differently than anything else on the market. And I think that's what Matt from Dedicated really came to us for. And I'm pretty excited to see what it looks like as a finished product. Let's get to it. make sure he's happy with it. All right, so here's the uh, finished unit. We're gonna probably change some of the tool paths just here and there based off of our own internal feedback. And, uh, but this is gonna go overnight to dedicated to make sure everything fits before we do the production run, so. All right, guys, it's a few days later and we have a problem. Let me show you what's up. All right, so some genius designed a vacuum chuck that fits the exact size of the block. So when we have that raw bar stock, or it's actually plate, sorry, it fits here and then it goes here. So when you're carrying 70 pounds and you're trying to put it in the machine, where do your fingers go? So I have now redesigned this and we are now gonna recut this, not a new one, but we're just gonna basically add some hole spots so that while you're carrying the bar or the plate stock over, you're gonna be able to drop it down and not scrunch or squish your fingers. So we're gonna go do that really quickly. We're gonna recut the O-ring groove, re-chamfer the edges that we're gonna cut and, uh, and make this vacuum fixture just a hair bit better. We're live again.
All right, as you can see, we've fixed my initial mistake with the vacuum fixture. We can now set the blocks on a little bit easier. Still 70 pounds, still not exactly fun, but at least you don't have to put your fingers in between the fixture and the block of aluminum. Uh, the first article that we made for Dedicated has been approved, so I'm gonna get to work.